Our Brussels correspondent Rosie Bercher joins us live. Uh, Rosie, what's the latest from the EU summit that's happening today? Lindsay, that summit has wrapped up. It was quite a resplendent affair. It was at the Palace of Versailles, red carpets rolled out by French President Macron and trumpets playing fanfares. But of course, those images in such stark contrast to what we're seeing from Ukraine. And that was very much on top of leaders' minds. This meeting was really about getting some political backing for big decisions about changing Europe's policies on some major areas in the longer term. The leaders think that a new chapter is really beginning here in Europe in response to this war. Firstly, there was a loose commitment to up defence spending across the bloc, but more importantly, they're really looking at trying to reduce Europe's dependence on Russia when it comes to energy. There was a commitment to try and phase out that dependence on Russian fossil fuels by 2027 and to reduce by two-thirds dependence on Russian gas by the end of this year. That will not be an easy process. It will involve accelerating transition toward renewables. It will involve diversifying sources for for example, looking toward the United States for LNG supplies, but it will not be easy and we certainly don't have any agreement from the EU on that full embargo on Russian oil and gas that Ukraine has been calling for. Now, yeah, Ukraine has also asked repeatedly for fast track membership into the EU. So what is the latest developments on that? Well, the leaders released a statement with some very warm words toward Kiev. They say that Ukraine belongs in the European family and that they support Ukraine's path toward membership. But the fact is the membership process is laid out in the treaties and it is simply not a particularly easy thing to do. Uh, the last country to join the EU was Croatia and Croatia's prime minister laid out a bit of how difficult it can be on his way into the talks this morning. He is what he here's what he had to say. We are ready to intensify and deepen our cooperation in order to pursue Ukrainians' efforts towards the, the European Union. I think this is the maximum what we can do today because the procedure, and I come from Croatia as the latest member of the European Union, I spent more than two decades working on our accession. I know how this is complex. So it can indeed take years and decades. Ukraine uh, president Vladimir Zelensky has already expressed some disappointment with this decision, but the EU is trying to show its broad support for Ukraine in other ways. It plans to increase uh, its military aid to Ukraine with a further 500 million euros in military aid, including lethal weapons. Right. And so uh, also President Joe Biden announced in cooperation with the EU and G7 uh, earlier today revoking Russia's most valued nation trade status. What have you heard uh, the latest on that from the EU side? Well, we did get a statement on that really just in the last hour or so. The summit wrapped up uh, and then we had a written statement from the European Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen, who is very much saying the EU is on board with that plan to revoke the most favoured nation status, but also that the European Union itself will be bringing forward a fourth package of sanctions against Moscow. And those will target things like cryptocurrencies and also it will ban exports of EU luxury goods to Russia. Here in Belgium, there's a big diamond industry, for example. And beyond that, they're really just trying to show that they are tightening the screws uh, and trying to really cripple Moscow's ability to finance this war. Yeah. All right, Rosie Burchard reporting for us from Brussels.